Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back to the next lecture. This is a continuation of the earlier lecture. So what we had earlier, we had uh, we have considered uh, the linear advection equation del rho by del t plus a del rho by del x is zero a is a given constant. And uh, the domain was uh, minus three to three, and the same initial condition. So the main idea always we have to. the PDE in the Lagrangian form as dx by dt is equal to a, d rho by dt is equal to 0. So this let us define as 22.1 is at 22.2 remark equation 22.1 is in Eulerian form yeah if you write with this one in the Eulerian form but in the Lagrangian form this convective part or Lagrangian form is similar to the characteristics for equation. So the convective part is, is uh, going. So this is very easy for if you have some problem with the upwinding, at least we have no convective part that is already hiding in this expression. Now what we see that all the effort what we have done that we have to compute a derivative, but here when we solve this Lagrangian form, there is no derivative. So let us make use of all our idea what we have spent time in order to approximate derivative and implement the idea here. So rewrite. Rewrite equation 22.1 as so. Let me write in this way del rho by del t plus I split a into two parts. For example, a by 2 del rho by del x plus a by 2 del rho by del x is equal to 0. So this a is a by 2 plus a by 2 time delta x or I can write a by 3 plus 2 a by 3. Yeah. So I can write in different way 1 fourth of a plus 3 fourth of a or the opposite. So I have many options but let us write in this form. Yeah. So then we have del rho by del t plus a by 2 del rho by del x is equal to minus a by 2 del rho by del x. Yeah. Now I have little bit different form. So 
So let us denote it as equation number 22.3. Now, express 20.3 in the Lagrangian form. So what will have? So our dx by dt, if dx by dt is equal to a by 2, so in the original one was dx by dt is a, then we get d rho by dt is equal to 0. But now if dx by dt is equal to a by 2, or d rho by dt is equal to this right hand side minus a by 2 del rho by del x. So this is I define denote it as equation number 23 2.4. Now equations number 22.4 is called a arbitrary Eulerian a Lagrangian which is in short form if you look if you google you it is called a l e so arbitrary Eulerian Lagrangian formulation what arbitrary means? I can move with any velocity. So I can give here instead of a by 2, I can write a by 3. So this I can split many ways. So I can split del rho by del. So a can be written as a by 3 plus tooth a by 3, or it can be written by 1 by 4th a plus. 3 fourth of a. Either I move with the 2a by 3 or a by 3, or either I move 1 by 4th a or 2 3 by a. So, therefore, I can have this many, many ways. Therefore, it is called arbitrarily formulated. So, people call it as arbitrary Euler Lagrangian Eulerian scheme. Yeah, this is in short form ALE. Now everything is the same as before, nothing has changed. Now we write our discrete equation. So discrete form of 22.4. So once we generate the particles xi and then we re-express the initial value in the discrete form. And then we write this equation, this ALA scheme in the discrete form. What we get that dx i by dt is equal to a by 2 because a is a constant. And then d rho i by dt is equal to minus a by 2 del rho i by del x. So let us define it as 22.5. So now what is the difference between the earlier case? In earlier case we had d rho i by dt is equal to 0. We had nothing to do. But now we have to compute approximation of this derivative. What I have written in the earlier lecture step by step. So first write I have your PDE, write either in the either in the Lagrangian form or ALA form, so arbitrary Euler and Lagrangian form, and then write them into discrete form. After writing into discrete form, you approximate to the right hand side value if there is a partial derivative. Now we have the partial derivative. We approximate this partial derivative, and then when we approximate the partial derivative, this right hand side is known, this right hand side is known, then we get 
completely ordinary time dependent ordinary differential equation so which is if i have n particle then i have n plus n 2n number of equation which is time dependent ode then once we compute the right hand side then we can use any ode solver for example the euler explicit euler or runge kutta order 2 order 4 maybe i will introduce little bit of the runge kutta order 2 in the coming lecture first let us compute complete the first order uh, the, the scheme so what do we have now so first so now approximate del rho by del x i For all i, and then plug into equation twenty-two point five, then we get time-dependent. system of ode then use any ode solver to solve it so for example we use now explicit euler explicit euler scheme so what it gives that xi n plus 1 is equal to xi of n so is equal to xi of n plus delta t times a by 2 because dxi by dt is xi n plus 1 minus xi n by delta t I put x i n i n delta t to the right hand side, and from this equation, what do we get? Rho i of n plus one is equal to rho i of n minus delta t times del. So this is already known. So let us write. This is already given. Now we have already written here del rho. I n plus one by del of sorry it is n by del of x still minus a by two so this is the a by two times del rho i of n by del x so this we have to solve. now here what we had we had encounter so now we have to compute the partial derivative so you remember that we have encounter the the instabilities when we have computed this part in the finite difference method with the central difference scheme and now again what we have our scheme also looks like central difference because if i have any particle i here these are neighbor yeah so what i do that i look this is my edge this is my edge so in our formulation what i have i am looking the neighbor on the left neighbor on the right then writing the taylor expansion and then minimizing the error and i am getting the derivative so that is nothing else you remember finite difference when you are sitting at i then you use i minus 1 use i plus 1 in order to compute your first order as well as second order derivative there we have encounter that there is instability it is exactly the same so if 
we do in the same way what I have described before, computing the derivative. This is nothing else. This is the central difference scheme. Now, how to do the upwinding here? Because what we had in finite difference, so up to now, our our computation method was like a central difference type. Since we have chosen neighbors from left as well as from the right, from the left as well as from the right. Right sides. Therefore, it is center difference. Now we need what? And this gives this will give on a stable on a stable solution. So our our solution will blow up. So what we need? We have to use upwinding idea. So what is upwinding idea? Yeah, suppose I am sitting at point I, I have the neighbor here. So this is also neighbor itself. So also here. So for example, we have we have list of neighbor of xi. So they are list of k, k is equal to 1 to m or nbs for example. Yeah? And now I have to select from the neighbor list according to the upwind idea. If A is positive, yeah, what I do that once I already have the neighbor, the list of neighbor because on the left and right inside H I have selected the neighbor and now I again sort out from that neighbor. So if A is positive, then I run from from k is equal to 1 to nb because I have big loop, yeah? So I have big loop that my center point is xi. So big loop for i is equal to 1 to n. Then neighbor. List of k, k is 1 to nb. And then if a is positive, I sort out for k is equal to 1 to I define another neighbor nb of 1, I initialize it. So if it is positive, so I am coming from 
here. If A is positive, then these all are my neighbor. So if so, I have to so initially I have the neighbor here as well as here. So if A is positive, I sort out the neighbor. If my list of neighbor, if list x, list of k is less equal to x of i, then I increment n b of 1 is n b of 1 plus 1. My new list, list 1 of n b, 1 is equal to list of k. That's all. So this is one, and this is another one. Yeah. So if a is positive, so information coming from left to right. You remember in the finite difference, I have taken i i minus one, but now I have taken all points which are falling behind the i. Yeah, behind the center point. So this is my now new number of neighbor. So instead of n b now my m in the in the the theory is n b one. My x i j what I had written in the theory in the derivation it is now list one of n b one. Yeah. So this thing we have to plug into our formula. Now what will happen if a is positive? It is the same. So if a is positive. So if a is positive, it's the same for again you initialize your n v1 is 0 or k is equal to 1 to n b. Now if my neighbors are larger than x i, if x of List of k, they are larger or because I the point itself is a neighbor. I should not take the other which is not the i. So the center point is a neighbor of itself. Yeah. So if it is larger than x of i, so I do the increment n b one is n b one plus one list of one of n b one is equal to list of k. So I in this if condition here, I in this loop here, and here. So still here what I need. So I have I have to write the one loop here. So I have to run for all never. For k is equal to 1 to n b, if list of k, so x, if the position x, list of k are less equal to x of i, I have increment n b1 is n b1 plus 1, so list of 1 of n b 1 is equal to list of k. Then I in this if condition, I in this loop for condition, then I in this if condition or else if I can write else, else if, if a is now negative, yeah, so information is coming from here. So if A is negative, the information coming from the right to left, in finite difference, what we had? We had I plus one and I, but now I take all the points which are larger than I. So from the original neighbor list, I sort out that if the neighbor points are larger than Xi, I just increase the NB1 from one. So my new list, on the upwinding direction is list one of nv1 is the original list. Then finally, I get original index. Then I end. So in this case, 
it is exactly the idea of final difference that we just take our convective velocity, either it is positive. If it is a positive, we take the neighbor, which are from the left. If it is negative, which are the neighbors are from the right, then we are automatically in the upwind idea. So I remind you that uh, since we have seen in finite difference, the opening scheme was a little bit more viscose, and then this was uh, given by some type of numerical, uh, more diffusive. It was something like a numerical viscosity, numerical diffusion. So what will happen that if we add in our this scheme, so if I add with the central difference scheme some numerical diffusion. So diffusion means that some diffusion coefficient plus second order derivative. So you know it from the convection diffusion equation. So if I add small epsilon, which is the diffusion coefficient, so is a numerical diffusion, then I put del 2 rho by del x square i at level n. So now this epsilon is order of delta x, then we may get, even with the central difference scheme, if I choose epsilon i as a function of delta x, then I add this one, then we get similar to upwinding scheme, because all upwinding scheme, I don't go into the theory of finite difference, so all upwinding scheme have a numerical diffusion, and they are of order delta x. So now if we add that numerical diffusion, into our center difference scheme, which is the epsilon is order of delta x times the, the second order derivative, this is the diffusive part, then we get stable solution. So uh, next I will show you that uh, the numerical implementation in the next lecture, which that the MATLAB code uh, next uh, will be the, exactly the implementation of the first uh, Lagrangian form of the original linear advection equation, and then a arbitrary Euler and Lagrangian form with central difference, upwinding, either it is positive or negative, then we get the stable as well as unstable solution. What I have shown presented in the finite difference case, I will exactly do the simulation in our case and so that we are as accurate as the finite difference, but with the arbitrary point. So I think we stop it today. So you wait for the next lecture for the implementation in the MATLAB of this scheme. So see you, see you in the next lecture. Thank you.